I should. Thank you very much. You're, you're right about that. Hello, everyone. My name's Chris Smith. I'm a practicing barrister at Quadrant Chambers. The title of today's Qubit talk is What is Legal Advice Privilege? In a nutshell, legal advice privilege is a rule of evidence that means that communications between a client and a lawyer for the purposes of obtaining or giving legal advice cannot be adduced in evidence. Now I know what you're thinking. That seems very straightforward, Smithy. How are you going to get 10 minutes out of that? Well, Despite sounding very simple, thanks to some horrendously difficult decisions in a series of cases called Three Rivers, this is not an easy area. Three Rivers generated three trips to the Supreme Court and several to the Court of Appeal. It's like a series of movies in which they kept on making sequels that no one wanted. The Court of Appeal gave a very important decision in Three Rivers number five, which has been heavily criticised. Subsequently, Two differently constituted tribunals of the Court of Appeal have said they think the decision's wrong. To make matters worse, the Supreme Court had the chance to review the correctness of this decision in Three Rivers No. 6, and they were indeed implored to do so, but their lordships decided against it. The result of all of this is, as one of the leading textbooks in the area has said, the position is as unsatisfactory as it's possible to imagine. Before getting into some of the nuts and bolts on the rule, why do we have it at all in the first place? Well, it's a rule of policy. The policy being to enable people to receive sound and accurate legal advice. The belief underpinning the rule is that a person must be able to consult his lawyer in confidence, otherwise they might hold back half the truth. So, what's required? The ingredients of a claim for legal advice privilege are a communication, between a client and lawyer that's confidential and that's for the purpose of obtaining legal advice. Now the questions are rising, what is a lawyer for these purposes? Who is the client? What communications are protected and which communications fall outside the scope of the rule? Now, I'm going to answer those individual questions. Before I get on to that, firstly, what's not required? You may have heard of legal advice privilege's more approachable brother, litigation privilege. Well, the main difference between the two is that legal advice privilege, or LAP if you're cool, does not require proximity to litigation or indeed any connection to litigation. And this is what primarily distinguishes it from litigation privilege. So, moving on to those questions I identified earlier. Who is the lawyer? External lawyers obviously qualify. Tick. In-house lawyers, yes, tick, they also count as well, but with a few caveats. Firstly, they must be authorised to practise, and secondly, at the relevant time, they must have been acting in their capacity as lawyers. That's important because sometimes in-house lawyers can also act in an executive capacity. If that's what they're doing in the relevant communication, then the privilege does not apply to them. Trainees and paralegals also count as lawyers for these purposes if they're supervised by a qualified lawyer. And finally, and perhaps obviously, foreign lawyers also qualify for these purposes. That's the lawyer. Next question. Who's the client? Strap yourself in, because this is where things get a little bit tricky. Let's take a company, Smith Corporation. They want legal advice, so they contact their usual lawyers, Smith, Smith and Smithfield. A series of communications follow between Smith, Smith and Smithfield and the various employees of Smith Corporation. You might automatically think, well, these communications must necessarily be privileged. <coughs> Wrong. That is where Three Rivers comes in. The effect of the Court of Appeals decision in Three Rivers is that only those individuals within Smith Corporation who have been specifically authorised to seek and obtain legal advice are the client. No other employees of Smith Corporation constitute the client for these purposes. So, if Smith, Smith and Smithfield approach various employees and seek factual or other input from them to assist with the provision of the legal advice that they're meant to be giving, then those communications will not be privileged unless the relevant employees have been authorised not just to talk to the lawyers, but to also to seek and receive advice from them. That is the position at the time of filming, and until that changes, when deciding whether the privilege applies, if you're dealing with a large company, 
very careful consideration needs to be given as to who the client is. By way of a practical illustration, in Three Rivers, the relevant corporation was the Bank of England, but only three individuals within the Bank of England were held to constitute the client for these purposes. Next question, what communications are covered? Well, they must be confidential. If the relevant communications form part of the Guardian's latest front page scoop, well, they lose any protection they might otherwise have had. Also, the communications must be for the purposes of obtaining or giving legal advice. Legal advice is given a broad definition. Lawyers are quite often give strategic or commercial advice. I'm frequently asked not just to advise on the law, but to give assistance on the more general question, what should we do? Advice of this nature is covered by the privilege if it's provided in a legal context. The courts have said that one way of framing this question is to ask whether the lawyer is being asked to put legal spectacles on when providing the required assistance. Let's say the communications are given or created for several purposes. The privilege will only apply if the obtaining or receiving of legal advice was the dominant purpose. What communications are not covered now? Well, communications between the client and third parties are not covered, even if the purpose of them is to allow the lawyer to be instructed. The flip side of that coin, communications between the lawyer and third parties, they're also not covered. And that's the case even if the lawyer is seeking to obtain materials to enable it to provide the requested advice. Remember the decision in our old friend Three Rivers here. Third parties has a very broad definition. It includes anyone who is not authorised by the company to seek or obtain legal advice. So it covers employees of the relevant company who don't have that authority. I've obviously said that the privilege only covers communications between the client and the lawyer, but there is one important exception to this. The privilege extends to documents which note down or seeks to pass on the relevant legal advice. So, let's say I'm the client, I have a meeting with the lawyers, I then make a note of what the lawyers have told me of their advice. That document is obviously not a communication between a lawyer and the client, it's purely internal to me, but because it notes down the advice, it's covered by the privilege. The same applies if I subsequently email other employees of Smith Corporation and say to them, I've just met the lawyers today, they've told me this, our claim's going to fail, eek. That document is also privileged. While strictly speaking, it's not a communication between a client and a lawyer, because it contains advice that had been given in a qualifying communication, it also attracts the privilege. So, in order for legal advice privilege to apply to your document, it must pass between a lawyer and a client. Client is given a narrow interpretation for these purposes, some would say an artificial one. If anyone's watching this talk in the year 2042 and the Supreme Court has got around to overruling Three Rivers, then the case might be different. The communication must have been made for the dominant purpose of seeking or providing advice, though it doesn't have to be purely legal advice. If you can establish that your communication ticks those boxes, then you don't have to adduce it in evidence. And that is legal advice privilege.